kids, today we're going to be learning about powers of 10 and exponents. And your learning target for this lesson is that you're going to be able to use whole number exponents to denote and explain powers of 10. And so denote means simply that you'll be able to write the powers of 10 and also be able to explain it. So we're going to learn really quickly who holds the power when we're talking about powers and exponents. And if you look on your screen, you will see the definition of base and the exponent. And you'll also see an example that explains the definition. So the number used as the repeated factor, that is going to be the base. So this 10 is used as the repeated factor in this example here three times. The exponent is the number that tells how many times to use the base. So our exponent is this tiny three here and it tells us how many times we're going to use the base. And in this case, we're going to use the base three times. So we quickly can tell who holds the power. And the power definitely belongs to the exponent because the exponent is what drives or tells us how many times we are going to use the base. So before we move any further, I would like for you to pause the video and go ahead and write down the definition in your summary for a base and exponent and also the example if that helps you. So pause the video and take a moment to write that down. Okay, great. Next, let's move on to some representations of the base 10 blocks that we've been using in class. And so we have our thousands or our cube, because remember we're using whole numbers, so we can officially assign a name, a temporary name to these blocks because we're using whole numbers. And so instead of trying to draw the cube, we could just write a square and put TH for thousands in the middle. And then for our flat, we just write a square for to represent the hundreds for our flat. And then for our longer rod, we just draw a line. And then for our Q, we can just, you know, scribble in a little dot there. And so when we're using these, they also relate to powers of 10 and exponents. And let's take a look at how that works. So we're looking, let's start in the ones place. So we're going to move over here and we're going to start in the ones place. And if we were relating this to powers of 10 and exponents, what we will see is that the powers of 10 and exponents will look something like this as it's related to the unit, which would be a 1. And 10 to the 0 power is equivalent to the digit 1, so or the number 1 that represents that number. Okay? Let's look at our long. Our long is represented by 10 ones. So 1 times 10 is 10, and 10 to the power of 1, or 10 to the first power, lets us know that we are multiplying 10 one time, and that's going to give us our, our long or our rod when we're looking at that. Let's keep going, and let's look over here at our flat or our hundreds, and let's see how that is going to relate to the power of 10 and exponents. So we have 100 ones, that represents our flat. 1 times 10 times 10 is the same as saying 10 to the second power or 10 to the power of 2. And this lets us know that we're going to multiply 10 two times. Okay? And then finally, let's look at our thousands or our cube. And we can see that when we're representing the thousands, it's 1,000 ones, and it also means 1 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is the same thing as 10 to the third power, 10 to the power of 3. We will discuss in class specifically 10 to the power of 2 and 10 to the power of 3 and talk about 10 squared and 10 cubed. And really, if you look at the pictures, you can see why they're denoted in that manner, squared and cubed. And so this is how our powers of 10 and the bases relate to our exponent. Now we're going to look at how to read and write exponents. Okay, reading and writing exponents is fairly simple. And so we have two forms, exponent form and word form. And so if we're looking at 10 to the second power, our exponent form would be 10 times 10, and our word form would be 
the second power of 10 or 10 to the second power. We could say those either way. When we're looking at this next one, our exponent form will be 10 times 10 times 10, or in word form, the third power of 10 or 10 to the third power. Either way, we could write those things. Now, let's look at 10 to the fourth power, which would be here, 10 times 10 times 10. And in word form, it would be the fourth power of 10 or 10 to the fourth power. Let's look at a couple of more examples, some things that you're going to be asked to do. So when you're looking at this next section, here's a few ways that you will be asked to, um, or some directions that you will be given when you're working with the powers of 10. So some of the ways that you're going to be asked to show your understanding. One of those ways would be to write in exponent form and word form. So based on what you've already looked at, take a moment to write down what you think the exponent form and word form is for 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Pause the video and try that now. All right, let's see how you did. Hopefully you were able to say that the exponent form of 10 times 10 times 10 was 10 to the fifth power, and then the word form 10 to the power of five or 10 to the fifth power. Now make sure that you are careful when you're writing this as an exponent because your five needs to be small. It needs to be smaller than number 10 so it doesn't look like 105. Next, you might be asked to find the value of 10 to the fifth power. So let's look at that. Pause the video and see how you would find the value for 10 to the fifth power. Okay, so hopefully you were able to come up with 100,000. And what we would notice in this example is that 10 times 10 would be 100. 100 times 10 would be 1,000. 1,000 times 10 is 10,000, and 10,000 times 10 would give you 100,000. And there's also a pattern that we should be noticing when we're looking at what we did here and the value of 10 to the fifth power and what that means. Now let's move on to seven times 10 to the third power. This time we have to multiply a whole number by a power of 10. And so what we're doing here is we're saying that seven times 10 to the third power equals something. So that means seven times 10 times 10 times 10 here. And so we can say 10 times 10 is 100, 100 times 10 is 1,000. So we're really saying that this is seven times 1,000 and that's gonna give us 7,000. Again, there's a pattern that we should notice when we're looking at what's happening here and what's happening here. Sometimes you may be asked to complete a pattern and which is what's going on in this example here. And remember, when we're looking at six times 10 to the zero power, 10 to the zero power is equivalent to one. So we will have six times one is six, and then six to the 10 to the power, six times 10 to the power of one is just saying six times 10, because we're doing that one time, which would be 60, and ten, six times 10 to the power, power of two, we're looking at six times 10 times 10, so we're keeping our, our basic fact of 6 times 1 and then times 10 times 10. That gave us 100. And so we would know that would be 600. And we would repeat this pattern for the last one, 10 times, 6 times 10 times 10. And that will give us 6,000. Now you're going to take this information from the overview and try some problems on your own. Let's take a look at what those look like. All righty, kids, here you go. Try these on your own in your journal. Remember to go to Edmodo and say, Ms. Clemens, I have watched the video, or Ms. Cassidy, I have watched the video, and make sure you complete your WISC and be ready for class tomorrow. See you then.